Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create kind of a cool 3D tubular spine effect uh, within Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. All right, so I just created a 1920 by 1080 document and created some colors up here that we can use for reference later. Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do with these colors is kind of create uh, you know, a smooth color palette. You're gonna to wanna to choose five colors to begin with and then we can loop back to the original four colors using the fifth one as kind of a center point for the gradient that we'll be creating. This will give us nine swatches total uh, but basically you just want all these colors to kind of feel good together, uh, be a decent color palette. Uh, right here I have kind of an analogous color palette which I'm very fond of but you can choose whatever you want as long as you're varying uh, some light, some dark, that'll keep keep this effect interesting. So the first thing that we're going to do once we have our document built and we have our color set up is hit the L key or come over here to your tool panel and grab an ellipse tool. We'll draw an ellipse maybe about this size. From there what we will do is make our uh, fill a gradient. Uh, so now that we have a gradient what we'll do is click on the left side here. Um, yours might be black and white to begin with but uh, I recently did this so um, we have some colors already set. So like I said, we'll click the left side here. We will hit the color picker and we'll hit this first color in our line. Then we will come to the second color uh, over here. Make sure it's highlighted in white. Back to our color picker and then hit the second color. Once we're done with that, we can close out our gradient tool and then come back here and duplicate our circle with uh, an alt click and drag. Uh, I'll click and shift drag so it stays in the same line, uh, same height as the other one. Uh, so then we're going to want to edit this gradient as well. So we'll click over here on our gradient tool. Again, we'll click the first color and make it the same as the second color that we used in our first circle. So uh, we will click this second swatch here. Um, and then same thing, we'll click the color picker, make sure it's selected in a dark color and click our third color, which will give us the uh, next circle. So basically you're just gonna repeat this uh, until you get all the way to the end. Um, I'm just gonna speed up this process here so you don't have to sit through me doing it, um, but yeah. Okay, awesome, we have all of our spheres drawn with the gradients applied to the fill. Uh, what we'll do next is select all of those uh, circles and come up to object blend make which will give us um, an initial blend but we're going to want to adjust that a little bit so we'll come back to options or object blend and then blend options uh, we'll switch from smooth color to specified steps uh, and then for those specified steps what we're going to want to do is change this to around 100 this is going to depend on the resolution of your document but i found that 100 is a pretty safe bet without taking up too much of your computer's power so we'll just click ok you can see that we have a nice smooth gradient here. So yep, not too chunky. This will look a little bit differently once we do our next step. But for now, let's just get this off the artboard. Oh, computer's a little slow. Get that off the artboard, and what we'll do next is draw a line with the brush tool. So you're gonna wanna double click on this brush tool to make sure that your fidelity is at very smooth. Um, 12 pixels is fine here. Um, and then make sure edit selected paths is selected. We'll hit OK. And then from here what we can do is draw ourselves a line. So this doesn't really matter. Um, make sure it's nice and curvy and fun. Uh, we selected smooth fidelity. So this should uh, smooth itself out once we are done drawing the line, even if it's a little bumpy. So don't worry too much about making a smooth line. Then what we'll do is go back to our V key, we will select this path, and then we will also select this tube of gradients that we created up here. Then we will go to Object, Blend, and Replace Spline. So what that's gonna do is bring our gradient uh, into our brush path that we just drew. So maybe we wanna adjust this a little bit, shrink it down because it comes off our artboard a bit. Yeah, that's um, more or less the effect here. So next thing that we're gonna do is just draw ourselves a background here. 
let's make this just a nice dark color and from there what we'll do is command shift left bracket to send it to the background maybe we want to actually add a little gradient to this so why don't we click our gradient tool and do a radial gradient instead of a linear like we did last time we'll take this inner one make it a little bit of a lighter color um, so draw back all these CMYs and K's and then do something like be a 70% black here and then we will copy this hex and then come to this right one double click on it to edit paste our other hex in there hit enter uh, and I want to change that Kelvin level a little bit uh, maybe it gets a little darker on the outside yeah something like that um, obviously you're gonna want to play with these colors for your own design and get something that fits whatever you're trying to do um, but this is just an example of how we can create this effect. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do here is just draw a rectangle over the whole thing again. We'll switch this fill to just a mid-tone gray. Hit OK. From there what we'll do is come up to Effect, Artistic, then Film Grain. You can use any of these effects, but um, just using this one as a demonstration. Uh, and then feel free to play with the grain size, the grain intensity, depending on kind of the look you're going for. Um, so why don't we try this? Uh, maybe up the intensity a little bit. Uh, you're always gonna wanna do this step last because it takes a lot of your computer power. But once you have something you're happy with, click the okay and it will start rendering. Uh, once you have that rendered and complete, what we can do is play with the blend mode of this. So we'll take it from a normal blend mode down to an overlay which is gonna make sure that we can see what is in the background and what we just created in our design. So now you can see that we have this cool film grain applied to the top of the shape that we just created. Um, so yeah, that's more or less it for today's tutorial, guys. If you found it helpful, it would be awesome if you leave a like on this video. And uh, if you're interested in more content like this, it'd be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel. All right, thanks for stopping by. Later.